All right, everyone. So I made my first video with my first impressions of early and early mid game on my first channel. But going forward, all of the covering for Weathering Waves is going to be on this channel. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see in depth coverage of Weathering Wave. Um, I want to talk about the experience I've had through the mid game and starting into the late game. We just unlocked, finished unlocking all the end game modes. So um, I've unlocked the simulated universe mode. I've unlocked all of the domains and I've unlocked the hologram mode as well as the spiral abyss, the depths of elusive realm, I think this no this I don't remember. But anyways, those are the those are the three end game modes. So I wanted to talk about my thoughts and if they had changed at all after my first video, I've also unlocked most of the map, if not all of it, like pretty darn close, just a little bit left here and there. And I had already finished the main story quest before my first video, but now I finished most of the side quests as well. So that's where I'm at. I've definitely, you know, played the game a lot. I will say I've been pretty unlucky with my character roles. I've gotten two five stars. Um, F Encore, who is a fusion DPS, one of the characters I was not excited to get, although I have enjoyed playing as her more than I thought I was. I would. And Ling Yang. Um, I know Ling Yang has a really cool kit and he fights up in the air and he does cool stuff and I played around with it, but to be honest, his character design is not for me. His kit's not for me. He doesn't feel like super satisfying to play for me compared to some other characters. I know a lot of people love him and I know he's super fun and so no hate towards the character at all. Just not for me. Um, I've obviously gotten her. She's given for free, but I've also gotten dupes of her. Obviously, the main character, uh, Morteffi, um, Chixia. I've gotten a ridiculous amount of copies of her. I have her E4. Um, so yeah, this is what we're working with. It's a pretty, and she's given for free. Chixia is given for free. So basically, my only he, she's given for free. My only pulls have been Morteffi, Lion Guy, and Encore because Baiji is given for free as well. So my gotcha luck has been awful. Like I have gotten basically no characters, basically just dupe of everyone and weapons and the five stars that I have gotten I haven't I, I didn't like so this is something that I reflected on a bit after um after making my first video is that like you can't ha not have a negative bias towards the a gotcha game when you get crap gotcha luck and you can't spend your way out of it there's no way to spend your money um on the on the banners you know to to to, to, to spend your way out of it because normally I could just spend money get a cool character and then play and then enjoy the game from there that's what I'd normally do if I was covering a new gotcha game and I wanted to really cover it but I can't do that so I'm saving up my jade my not my jade my uh crystals or whatever for uh Lin Ying because she looks fantastic and everyone's already playing Gion I want to play Lin Ying really really bad so I'm saving all my pulls for then it's gonna be awesome that's where we're at in the account now let's go through my thoughts and see if I change my mind I'm not gonna react to myself I just want to talk about each of my conclusions in the first video so I talked about the gameplay basics yeah that was all fine the Pokemon so they're have been a couple things that people have noticed there have been a couple concerns about the echoes so the echo system uh, i'll give you a rundown you have different costs for your echoes so you have a total of 12 costs that you can attribute across your five echo slot the set bonuses similar to genshin and star rail are a two piece but the next one is a five piece so it's not a four piece it's a five piece so there's no off piece i am not a fan of not having off pieces that's the one thing that makes uh relic farming in star rail really much harder than genshin it's one of the quality of life things that no one talks about in Genshin um, because, you know, people just want to push the Genshin horrible narrative. And I, trust me, Genshin has a ton of issues. But one of the good things that they do right, let's praise what they do right, they have an off piece. Off pieces are awesome because if you get a cracked relic that's super rare, um, you have an off piece. So the fact that you need a five piece anyways is a major L. I'm just, you know, calling a space space. It's not hate. It just is what it is. It's an L. Um, that being said, uh, you also have a main stat and then you have four or then there's then you have five five substats I think up to five substats mine um this one only has three substats because it's not it's a lower rarity um care uh, lower rarity echo but if you get a higher rarity echo they can have more substats so do I even have any golds I don't think so let's take a look at this one though yeah so you can see this is a purple and we have four substats unlockable um here now you might be thinking so basically what happens is that you level it up leveling it up and unlocking substats are separate so you use one currency to level them up or one resource to level them up and you you have another um, another resource to unlock substat. So back to this one, if you go over here, you can say I've only unlocked one substat. I can unlock this substat using this material, which I had to use resin to farm. I'm going to call it resin because I don't know what it's actually called. So it takes a lot of echo XP. The echoes you farm cannot be used as fodder. You can fodder in a leveled echo into your un into an unleveled echo if you want to level it up and you'll lose. Similar to Genshin, you lose 70. You, you can you retain 70 to 80% of the 
experience. But key point, you don't keep any of the substat unlocking material. And substats, you've got flat stats, flat attack, attack percent, flat defense, defense percent, HP. You also have crit, rate, and crit damage. So there's a lot of stats and they have a huge variance. They have, I think you can get as low as 2% crit and as high as 10% crit or some, something like that. It's like a really, really large range. And so a lot of people are not happy with this system because to farm echoes, you have two choices. You have the choice to farm echoes out in the world, killing mobs. So any mob that you run into anywhere um, has a chance to drop an echo. It won't always drop an echo, but it has a chance. You can farm the overworld farming for echoes. And that's cool, right? It's nice to have the option, of course, to go around and uh, and farm echoes. So if I find these guys are not animals, they don't have echoes, but see if we can find any. Let's see. I, I, I don't know where any are, so I don't know if it'll take me a while to find them. Um, but let's see if we can find any. The thing is, they're a bit sparse for one. Like it's going to take a lot of right, a lot of uh, you're going to have to have, you know, your farming route. And uh, by the way, this echo is really cool. If you've been noticing. Um, OK, here we got some. But um, yeah, that echo is really cool because she has the special ability to like reset your double jump and give a bit of aerial mobility. So we're just going to kill these three guys and we're going to see if any echoes drops from here. Obviously, this is not necessarily indicative of the end game because presumably drop chance for an echo will increase. But I just farmed three and we didn't get any echoes, right? So I wouldn't put too much stock into that because again, hopefully the drop chance increases as we uh, as we move on. But you know, we don't know. We don't, I don't know for sure, but presumably it will. Uh, so we've got some more guys over here. So yeah, basically that's what I'm saying is you can farm, you can farm echoes out in the world and you can't use these as artifact experience. So in Genshin, you can do artifact roots and farm three, four, three and four star artifact to gain experience. This is sort of the opposite. You can get the main stat or you can get the main echoes, but not, oh, there we got, we got a drop. Nice. But you can't get experience from it. So it's sort of the opposite and it's not unlimited, but you can travel to other people's worlds and do it. I haven't tried to try to travel to anyone else's world, um, but presumably you could spend all your time infinitely going to people's worlds and farming echoes to get the perfect main stat. Because once you farm, farm these echoes, you not only need the main stat. So this one, I got have crit rate, which is great, but you don't always have crit rate. Like if we look at my four cost, for example, I have two that are the same. One is crit rate, one is healing bonus. So that's not super good, right? But they also have different rarities. Presumably it's gonna be easier to get the rarities as you level up. But yeah, they have different main stats. And then they also have different substats, uh, energy recharge, HP attack, and we max level. We can't unlock any more substats because uh, this is only um, a blue rarity, not a purple or gold rarity. I don't have any gold ones yet. Um, if we look at the three cost, similar thing. They've got, this is where your havoc, your damage bonus is coming from. That's going to be an important stat, but there's also attack percent, energy regen, energy regen. You can also get defense, right? So you can get defense percent. So you have to get, you have to get the echo to drop. You have to get the main stat. You have to get the sub stat. You have to farm resin to level them up. You also have to farm resin to unlock the sub stats. And if you don't get the sub stats, you don't get to use that material again. So you have to refarm it again. So it, it's hard to really know how much resin this is really going to take until we get to the end, end game. Apparently from people in China who have really grinded it out, they are saying that they're not happy with it. Now, this isn't like everyone, you know, people in China are saying they're not happy with it. What percentage of people? 20%, 80%. I don't really know the sources that I've seen. I don't really know. There's been no real way to figure it out. All I'm saying is that I, I think that there's potential for good stuff here. And I also think there's potential for sort of cancerous stuff here, because what I don't want personally, you know, and people are going to get mad at me for being a little filthy casual. I don't want to have to spend, you know, five hours a day going to 50 different worlds to farm relics to be efficient with my account. I hope that that's not part of the game. If it is, that will be a negative for me. I'm not saying that that's a negative overall. Maybe some people really want to do that. But for me, if that is that, that would be a negative, especially since you have to go to other people's worlds. It's one thing to do it in my own world. If I have to go to the other people's worlds and like just spam going to other people's worlds and people are always going to spam me to go to other people's world. That's not what I want. It's especially since from what I can tell, there's no like, aside from like stealing your other other people's um, relics, which I think you can farm on two opposite sides of the map or something. And you can both farm each other's and not mess each other's drops or something like that. This is all beta stuff, though. So we'll have to wait and see what it's really going to be like at launch. Um, it's hard for me to really put a judgment on it until we actually until we actually can see the full release, really. But I hope that you know, they address because people's basically complaints is that it takes it a lot of time. And it's very resin unfair friendly, but we'll have to wait and see. I think that there's a lot of positives to this as well. Being able to farm artifacts in the open world instead of having to do it um, just in the same domains is really cool. Revisiting cool areas. That's really nice. Um, having an incentive
incentive to play more than just whatever minutes of day is nice like i don't i i'm of two minds about it right if it's fun to farm the artifacts for that long you know maybe that could be fun i do have an issue like i'm not i'm not totally against the idea right of the idea of i just wish it was all in one world i don't want to have to spam 50 people and join discords to join people and arrange all these things i don't want to have to do that i just want to have to be able to play my game so we're gonna have to wait and see the jury is still out on that i don't mind having to spam my own world to farm stuff we'll have to see. um i'm also a little bit worried because you can shiny hunt i'm a little bit worried about finding a shiny and then having the wrong main stat or having the wrong sub stat or low rolling into the sub stat i want to be able to use my shiny and show it off so maybe if there's like a very expensive reroll system um some sort of pity system some sort of maybe if it's a skin if you can skin one of your good artifacts with your shiny it's gonna really de-incentivize me to farm shinies if i can't fix the stat of my shiny to be good uh, and that will kill a lot of like that sort of gameplay loop for me that's my thought on the echoes i think that they're but i overall i'm really positive on the echoes overall like i really 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 love um not only the uh like obviously it's, it's cool that the artifacts are pokemon but it's way cooler that you can turn into them like for example like so you jump you have a double jump normally oh, i wasted it off the wait a sec so you jump you have a normal double jump right jump double jump jump double jump but if you have the crane this is a special crane um artifact pokemon you can jump double jump crane then double jump again and you get more mobility that's really really cool um and i don't know what other cool abilities are in there my butt over at life lessons 2 um who's been making some banger weathering waves content told me this so definitely go check out him he's grinding the game so if you want to stay up to date on like breaking news weathering wave like cutting edge stuff go check out uh go check my bud life last two so okay relic system has potent has some potential problems but has some potential really good stuff too so early to mid game loop has my mind changed on the early to mid game loop um so to get to level 27 i've done a lot of exploring i've done a lot of quests and i've really enjoyed the overworld quests overall i think that they have done a good job at fleshing out the overall world uh we did a cool quest where i went over here and unlocked this guy underground and went through kind of the underground and fought um fought through some cool caves and it was really sick i really had a good time with it i super loved it um yeah i mean i don't know what i'll say it was it was sick i had a ton of fun i didn't know what was happening i didn't know what was coming up next and it was a pretty interesting little um it was a pretty interesting little uh, little story and little stuff we had to do in the gameplay was pretty fun um the two story quests for the for the characters were both good and enjoyable um the two five stars i don't know how to get back into that cave I'm trying to find it again and where it went um but regardless that was good um the story quest where we you know found this clouded mushroom area it was i, I wish i could show you how it looked before um i don't want to like spoil it but it like it kind of looked cooler before so i wish i wish it actually stayed that way uh this was like a really a really cool like overground area with like mushroom stuff and now it kind of just looked the same as everything else but anyways um it was really cool that the world changed i just i just liked how it looked for but anyways that was a nice world quest it like sort of expanded the lore a little bit felt helped me feel a bit more immersed in the world that was a thing that i had earlier on an issue that i had is i didn't feel that immersed in the world i still feel like there's some overworld stuff um that's lacking like i find that there's a little bit of dissonance between how cool and creative and like the echoes look and the world look like the echoes are like to me like perversions of um perversions of of the world and they look sick like perversions of a bear perversions of a wolf you know perversions of a vulture of a bug of a monkey of this thing of metal that was so sick fighting finding this guy down in the depths was so cool um what i would like to see is areas that match the this this theme and this aesthetic like areas that are perversions of whatever area that they're um that they're trying to represent whereas i find right now like it's a little bit you know feels a tiny bit uninspired not crazy not awful by any means but it feels just like it feels like all the inspiration went to the echoes and in general there's not as much inspiration in the world as i could imagine there being personally um again not awful but i could use a little bit more i do like this like there's this like cool cool gun cannon thing here and the rock that are like this and that they're shaped like this that's really neat and it sort of speaks to there being some lore in the world and sort of makes me excited unfortunately there's nothing you can't actually explore this area and that's that's kind of the theme for a couple cool areas like if we go back here look look at this there's this mountain in the back oh that looks so cool the stuff in the sky and if you go over here um like this city in the sky you could see it kind of look at how cool this is this twisted mangled city in the sky oh i want that twisted mangled city to be here not in the sky i want it to be 
on the ground where I can explore it and wonder what happened to this city? What happened to make it look like this? That is what I want right there for the world, not in the sky. I want it on the world. So that's what I feel like this game is missing. It feels, I don't mind that it's drab. I don't mind that it's grayscale. I actually kind of like it to be different than Genshin. Sometimes when I go back to Genshin, I'm like, wow, this is like way too oversaturated. I kind of liked it before. Like I'm not complaining that it's like not saturated enough, not vibrant enough. What I want is to have it be more interesting. I want more inspired ideas like how that looks. I want that uh, that creativity on the ground. I, I, I'm fine with the mountains. I'm fine with the cities. They're okay. But I want cool perversions of the Empire State Building or like, you know, it doesn't have to be that, but maybe famous landmarks or maybe just landmarks that were famous in this world and now they're perverted and we can intuit a story from that. I want what's up there down here. So that's that, that's a big thing for me. Um, I talked about the characters. My mind has changed a bit on the characters in the sense that I just realized how ass my luck has been. It's just been awful. So once I get some good characters, I'm going to like, especially Yinlin, I'm going to be really pumped to cover this game. Um, I mean, pumped is going to be awesome. So yeah, I think that's a big thing for me. Like, why haven't I dug it really in depth into like the combos? Because I don't care about these characters. The way that I like to play these games is super shallow, but I like to start off really mastering the characters that I love and then using that mastery and branching out to other characters. That's how I play any fighting game I pick up. That's how I play gotcha games. I like to master, really master one or two characters that I love. And then I can learn the basics of the game based on that and then branch out from there. I haven't really had that opportunity because I don't just don't love any of these characters that I have currently. Um, but I think overall, like I said, the five stars of this game, especially the limited five stars, Ji Yan and Yin Lin look amazing. Um, story, um, I haven't, there's no new story since I last made my video. Um, the story sucked. In my opinion, it was boring. Uh, it was so much dialogue and it really didn't create a sense of intrigue for the world. Someone told me the story in the closed beta test one. It sounded way better, to be honest. Like this one was, it was just, it was not gripping. It didn't grip me into the world very well. It had some good moments. It had some good cutscenes that it built on, but the story wasn't good. I think that, but I, like that doesn't stop me from wanting to play the game, right? I'll, I'll, I'll happily skip through a bunch of early story. If it gets later on, if it gets good later on, great. If not, oh well, as long as the, I can feel immersed in the world, as long as the story is decent. And I will say there is good potential for the story because like I said, there were some good moments. Um, the character quests were very good. So I do think that there is a chance for the story to be good. It just maybe hasn't cooked enough. Like they, apparently they rewrote the whole story between the last beta and this beta. So that could, they, they very well may fix the pacing issues and throw in a little bit more hooks in the beginning. And that could totally fix it, right? If they just little trim some dialogue here, move a little cutscene here to here, make some better pacing, I could totally fix it. And then they, and then obviously if I can play more and I get a little bit more in tune with the world and something actually cool happens um, that makes me care about the world and not just some character, then even better. So uh, the story is not good, but it's not irredeemable either. That's just the beta story. Uh, for combat, as I said before, combat's amazing. Um, sure, let's go fight a boss. I've got extra resin. I need to fight this guy. I can't figure out how to get. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so for the record, I'm not that good at this game yet. So, you know, and we're still early game. So don't, don't judge me too hard, but we're going to go into the first place. Look, we got our perfect dodge off. Look at how good I am. Um, I find that, oops, I was a bit too late on that. When I'm in using the echo, uh, I can't really perfect dodge, I don't think. So um, it is what it is. So we're going to use our echo, fight him. We knocked him down. I did a perfect dodge so far. Apparently when you get the higher levels, they unlock new move sets, makes them cooler to fight and stuff like that. Right now, they're sort of pushovers or sort of mash fest. Um, but even then, you know, we got our perfect dodge in. Look at this go. It still feels really s substantial. It feels really fun. It feels engaging. Like I'm enjoying the combat a lot. I have no complaints whatsoever with the combat. And as I was thinking about it, you know, I was, when I, I was thinking about whether I want to cover this game and really dive into it a, a lot. Um, I was thinking to myself, what do I love about Genshin? Why do I cover Genshin so much? It's because it has very good combat and I, and I, it has very good characters. And I think that this game has potentially even better combat. I'm not going to say it is better because I, uh, you know, we're still in the early stages, but I think that the systems and things are here for the combat to even be better. There's more end game systems at launch than the Genshin has after two, three years. So there's more places to test combat as well. Um, so there's a chance that the combat is way better here. Oh, we got affected by this. Um, so I think between um, the combat and then the fact that the characters are, especially the five stars, are looking really mega cool. Look at how many dodges I'm getting. I'm, I'm so good at this game, dude. Look at that. Holy moly. I didn't see the parry come up. There's supposed to be a parry. I don't know if I'm just missing it, if I'm really bad, or if there's just not a parry for this 
this boss at this level but whatever it is i didn't see it so fought a boss uh combat is good let's see if we got our echo drop um like i can see myself farming these echoes and looking for a shiny looking for a cool drop um that's really that's really cool i like i like that what was he it's a new purple crit damage dude let's let's take this time and level it up let's see what we can get so we have we can put we can max it to 20 let's do it this is the beta it's crit damage what are we gonna do we need to find crit rate let's unlock some sub stats right we'll unlock we got heavy attack damage bonus that's like a charge attack that's not very good not a very good sub stat and can you imagine that's oh my god the amount of sub stats is crazy okay um hp total l energy regen okay and resonance liberation damage what the heck is resonance liberation damage is that a type i don't even know i've never even heard of that it doesn't even it doesn't even fit on the screen Ooh, what are we talking about here so i'm i'm a little bit scared i'm i'm a little bit scared for this for this system the question is also how important is the system can you get by with really low gear or do you need really high-end gear if you need really high-end gear i'm telling you right now the system's gonna be cancer so uh but if you don't need high-end gear and you just need skill then that's something else but we don't, no one's at the end end game no one has end game build no one knows yet so um gotcha i talked about the gotcha nothing has changed since there i've had horrible luck aesthetics visual music i think that i, I talked about the visual already i told you what i want to see um look at us go got stuff very nice oh got to level 15 etc etc okay um yeah i mean i think the gotcha is fine right it's a gotcha it sucks but it's fine gotcha sucks this gotcha sucks less than genshin it's fine um but i think that the resin system i think this i said i said it before people were like oh wow there's more resin yeah but everything costs more these guys cost more you know the boss doesn't cost 40 he costs 60 right every the domains cost 60 everything costs more um does that mean that it's worse no does that mean it's better no we'll have to wait and see when it, how it all shakes down how it all come together um really at launch and so overall um you know i gave it a rating i pretty much stick to my rating feels like a 7 out of 10 so far which i think for a beta is really really good i think 7 out of 10 is an awesome score for a beta so um i'm still really excited let me know what you think of the game um i think it's it's growing on me overall and i'm st I'm, I'm before i was like maybe optimistically cautious now i'm cautiously optimistic <laughs> something like that um i'm looking forward to it i think it has um a huge potential of being the game that i cover um fully and really dive into and really master i think it's something that i can do and will do and it's gonna be a lot of fun um but i'm just kind of waiting for other people to get to end game and um, i'm about to like we got a viewpoint and i'm about to uh to get to end game myself i just unlocked all those bosses so i'll let you know how, how fun that is we'll have another end game review maybe i've got other ideas for content um showcasing all the bosses in the game and i've got other ideas too so let me know what you want to see if you have any other stuff maybe i'll i'll do a little combat thing as well after i beat those harder bosses so i've got lots of videos planned let me know what you want to see take care bye for now